to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday episode, MVP episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Excited to be with you. Wishing you the very best on your fantasy drafts this weekend. It's our job to make you better, hopefully, and to get you ready to go. We are in three different drafts going on right now, slow drafts, that are, I mean, this is this is the season. I, I we're under a week from kickoff and we have our league of record draft for the very first time on the debut of, you know, the first game of the year, which is a, it's a dangerous proposition. We just need to start it on time. Right, like we can't make sure go that I can late. import the teams <laughs> properly. Cause we do that offline and don't stress me out too much. But you, you know usually what? update the schedule for the divisions, all that. That's all yeah, got to happen not... post draft, pre kickoff, and uh, and all of it's going to happen while I sit at my desk with a banner Mute that talks microphone. about the three championships, Mute microphone. and then a, a variety of other things that have arrived in packages in the last couple. weeks. All I know is Marilyn Monroe better show up, or I'm going to be disappointed. Uh, I I'm a little excited. You know how Saturday night uh, Saturday Night Live does the what is it, the five time appearance you get the like, oh they have yeah, the, yeah, bit, yeah the jacket yeah, yeah it's like like andy's in the three-time club now it's, yeah look it, when you're in a club by yourself it's a little lonely like you're just it's just me hanging out playing video games all by oh, myself so you, you like that i'm in there with you eh, it's just, yeah welcome in i got a i have a friend now i told him that it, there was a chance that i didn't do a bunch on draft day and just got an old hat because this is just getting kind of uh, habitual I understand. You know is what I mean? it habitual? Because it's been, what, over a decade? <laughs> I'm pretty sure in the last decade, the only multi-time champ is me. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, if you guys want to go way back, that's cool. <laughs> All right, so the season's definitely ready to kick off. We've got an MVP. You guys suck! <laughs> We've got an MVP, a fantasy MVP episode. Super excited. All three of us are going to reveal our fantasy MVP. One player from 2024 that we think will be the difference between an okay season and a championship and we have a ton of special guests sharing their fantasy mvps on today's show including rich rebar nathan yonke ben gretch kyborg and betsy will share theirs we got jj zacharyson back on the show today and we've got Kay adams on the show All today right. as well so very very excited to jump into it the ultimate draft kit you need it for this weekend ultimate draft and the megalobowl we are approaching 16,000 people. Mega. 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 <laughs> Megalobol. Oh, I was going to let you little, just go. Uh, Megalobol.com. Hop in there. Drafts start tomorrow. thought you were about to go McConaughey again. <laughs> that, that was, was that from the live show? That was show? the live show, yeah. He was, um, Jason was something else. At the I live was show. caffeinated. Uh, it's more than that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Well, 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 we got here. Brandon Ayuk has yeah, baby! signed a four-year extension. Never worth, worried for a minute, guys. Worth $120 million. And um, there's a lot to unpack here, but let's go back in time for a moment to to, oh. to pick up on something Mike said. Uh, do we have a date? When, when all of the – and keep in mind, this was when the trade rumors were hot. He had demanded a trade or requested a trade. Teams had trades on the table. We're waiting for it to be done. People are reporting it's going to happen. So this is back in July. Mike uh, shared this with us. And trading away Ayuk. Just, just say it. Just say help. it, you coward. Say it's a guarantee. I guarantee Brandon Ayuk is on the 49ers this team or this year. <laughs> the contract extension. Clip that's, it. I just Clip believe it. it. 
Freezer, so, freezer cool takes. So we can play this and with triumphant and, and noise behind it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Pretty Mikey. <laughs> I you you never wavered. Now <laughs> the problem was you had him on your team. So it was hard to know how much was wishful thinking and how much was prognostication but it, it was, doesn't it was all about my team guys I'll, I, I'll be i'll be honest with everyone right now it, i needed him to sign back with the niners and the reports coming out around this move have been very interesting including the fact i mean this is a long two-month saga it's been annoying and he it's been was a coward and uh who was a coward Brandon Ayuk, you were a coward. Why oh, he, you're changing. What? Why is he a coward? Because yesterday he, it was uh, John Lynch was the coward. Yeah, and guess who backed down? Well, we found out that John Lynch didn't change yeah. his offer. John Lynch didn't push one more penny on that contract. I, Ayuk, saw, I saw plenty of people saying that that's also not true. I mean, Adam Schefter did report that. I'll just put that yeah, out there. Yeah, Schefter talked specifically it's, about the contracts offered from three other teams as well as from John Lynch. Yeah, but it was the 12th of he, he did mention specifically that the offer hasn't changed since August 12th. This saga has gone on a lot longer, so it's very possible there was some negotiation before that date. And then maybe on that date, San Francisco said, this is the best we're going to do. You've already shopped. We already know what the market is. We've got a deal set up with Pittsburgh. We will not trade you. This is what's also being reported unless we get back a top flight wide receiver that because we're in our window, our championship window. Yeah, that's why it never made sense so to me. So they offered, it's been reported already that they offered a third rounder to Denver for Cortland Sutton. That was turned down. <laughs> Denver. Yeah. Denver, Den what are you doing, baby? Yeah, Denver. You're not You could have got third? You you could have had a third in the future. You're not winning championships this year. Could have gotten something for Sutton. Something but they didn't. Sutton. And um we also knew they that they'll get nothing. Nothing for Sutton. <laughs> Little Sutton, Sutton. <laughs> Anything else we got? That's it. Um, We're dry. So they couldn't get back somebody. And this it's funny because this is a this is the most businessy business extension of all time. Because Ayuk wanted more money, and the 49ers were willing to let him go. Both of those are 100% true. And yet they came together on a deal. So it's like a, a, it was the reluctant partnership right. of two parties. It's a business transaction. It's a It's a push towards the Super Bowl. The thing that's weird to me, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, vet me, I believe it was reported $27.7 million per year was the offer from the Steelers, which Ayuk seemed ready to sign. Ayuk which, was happy to go to the Steelers. Right, and so it's but like, but that was less money than he ended up getting from the Niners, which he was... Which he reluctantly signed. Well, what is the what is the per year deal? Because there's, there's guarantees of $76 million. Yeah, I, th I think that's the, the... The reports came out saying that the offer, like... The total offer hadn't changed. We don't know that maybe the guarantee went from seventy to seventy six or something like that. He, and then Ayuk's like, okay, good, because it really is for NFL contracts. The guaranteed money mm -hmm. is everything. The hundred and twenty looks great. Maybe he gets there. Maybe he plays out the contract. But once he's through his guaranteed money, then this is why the guys fight for their contract. Because once the guarantee is gone, then the team can just be like, eh. You're out. You're too expensive now. We did, we're not going to fulfill our part of the contract. Yeah, that's normally when the player starts looking for that no, another guaranteed extension. Yeah. And Ayuk, is he worth this? For an NFL team, I believe 100%. I think he proved it. If, if The Patriots were willing to give him $32 million a year. That was the report. Yeah, and he, so, was, and he was easily like, nah. Nah, I don't, don't want to go there. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a it was a dance. So, um, pretty Mikey got it right. Yeah, baby. When asked about the status of Puka Nakua's knee injury, Sean McVay said he'll be ready to roll for Week One. There has been a little bit of buzz around the fact that this injury could linger. It also could be a re-injury risk, mm -hmm. and so that is uh, that's worthwhile. And it's not the last you're going to hear about it today. Robert Sala said Mike Williams will be available to play in Week One. He said he's feeling good. That, that's that's pretty big news yeah, I in the sense that this is a – like if, if Mike Williams were fully healthy, if he was I there bet. in training camp and was practicing with this team in full – it was never injured. Like, like Let's just say he was never injured. What would you think of the number two wide receiver for Aaron Rodgers in this, this offense? He'd probably be what, wide receiver 36, 40? Yeah, I was going to say seventh. And right now he's, you know, he's got to be wide receiver 80 or something. You can get him at the very end of your draft. Yeah, the news was 
starting to bend this direction uh, over the last week and a half. So I've been paying attention to him late in drafts. Yeah, I don't think you need – I'm not overreacting and overdrafting him from this news. Like I'm not, But when you're in the double-digit rounds and you're looking at just – just nasty boys here. Mike Williams Mike Williams will have multiple spike weeks in a range of wide receivers that they those guys probably Mike won't. Williams or Michael Wilson. I would I would rather Ooh. have Michael Wilson for the upside of consistency. Like I like Mike Williams this year in best ball quite a bit. He will have some long bomb touchdowns. But I, I even you know, uh despite what I just said, he is not uninjured he is still coming back from an ACL it will be a slow progress to get back on the field in you know at a at a hundred percent now Jason we're really going to need your work on this one because uh -huh. we've heard it the other direction yeah Mike McCarthy has told reporters that Rico Dowdle will get fewer special team snaps not none uh this season because of his expected increased workload on offense yeah no this is great news so it, it's really clear this time of year when you're a week away from the NFL draft if you are a running back and you're put on special teams like Kyron Williams, you're toast. You're right. done. Your career is over. And if you're taken away from special teams, you're the best. So you heard it here on the Fantasy <laughs> Footballers. Rico Dowdle, great. Kyron Williams, bad because of special teams. Here's Go ahead and clip that one, too. Here's what I will say. Because the Rico Dowdle love is, it is bold prediction stuff. It is low probability. It is yours. And it is it is mine. I will hold on to it. And this this is just part of a of a drumbeat of I'm hoping that talent wins out. And in my opinion, Rico Dowdle, when pads are on and NFL games are being played, will be by far the the best running back for Dallas. He'll have the most juice. And this is just a the window is opening for him to take the job. As in he doesn't have to sit around and wait for Zeke to get hurt in his time. This is, if you go out and you're the best guy, you'll take I'm it. I'm not doubting Pretty Mikey. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I'm not doubting look, Pretty Mikey. He hey, was, he was on a hot right, streak, one he, for one. Yeah, <laughs> he's right about the last thing. He was. Yeah. Um, but don't go back to Charles Jarwin over there. Oh, ACL. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that hurt. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance we are going to take a quick break right out of the gate because i want to jump into our fantasy mvp picks all right we are yes and it, now kyle kyle that was a joke yes it was a charles darwin blake yeah. jarwin combination it wasn't the Which right is, time for it we never used it before it wasn't but I just wanted to – when am I going to talk about Blake Jarwin again where I can try it on for sight? I know. Look, that is – I mean, that Charles Darwin, survival of the fittest. He was not fit. He right. tore his ACL. Thank you. I, I like it. Mike has pieced it together for me. I had no idea who <laughs> you were talking about. Oh, you honest. just moved on. I just was like, well, I heard I don't Jarwin and I yeah, – uh, You knew? You knew it? Look, my – Pretty Mikey's got me on you, lockdown over there. You think, the, you think my antennae don't fly up when someone says Jarwin still? Like, well, oh, you want to talk about Blake Jarwin? You, by the way, which Coles does he work at? Uh, I the believe one, it's the one on uh, Happy Valley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, he's an assistant manager, though, guys. Yeah, he's worked his way up. <laughs> he's doing pretty good stuff. General is well within his grasp. Blake, at least sales Blake, manager. Yeah. <laughs> Blake to clothing. <laughs> um, all right. That's so, we're just jerks. Um, it's time to jump in. Who's your fantasy MVP? All right, guys. How do you define a fantasy football MVP? Because this episode is one of my favorite every year. We get to share the difference-making player on our list and um, plant the flag. I mean, that that's really what it is. It's just it's a player. Yeah, Kyle has found Blake Jarwin <laughs> on LinkedIn. Yeah. But, wait, Cole's Kyle, assistant come on, manager. Is that, that's not real, Kyle. Are you Kyle? seriously a third degree away from Blake Jarwin? That's a dude. <laughs> No, this is real. What's he up to? Oh, he's an investor now. He did make like guys. He did get some money in the NFL. Uh, but so back to <laughs> fantasy MVP. When we when we invite these other experts on, though, I say this is whatever you want it to be. It's your favorite early pick, your favorite value sleeper, just the player you're the most confident in. I think for 
the three of us, and maybe I'm speaking out of turn here, but for me, it's pretty much who was my runner up for <laughs> right. my guy that wasn't like it wasn't in the top three for my guy, but it's a it's an MVP pick. That's true. I'll add the caveat that I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't choose a fantasy MVP that was not capable of, course, of carrying yeah. a big load for your fantasy team because, right. like, a couple, like three or four years ago, I had Darnell Mooney as a as a uh, my guy, and that he was like a ninth round pick that year. That's not going to be my fantasy MVP because I don't think Mar Mooney was going to go all the way to carrying my team but that's just how i define it that's why i asked the question sure yeah and, and for me this it's different every year uh sometimes there's some explosive like i believe last year was Bijan. um you know an explosive guy that i really think is going to um make a gigantic impact this year i know for for me my mvp is going to be someone that i think fits into drafts perfectly it's about where this player is going, what he represents for your team, and how you could construct a roster around him. So it, it can be anything. It could be a first rounder. It could be a late rounder. To me, it's is he going to help you win a championship? Because at the at the end of the year, that's all that matters. All right, we put the call out, and we've got some experts, some friends of the show, sharing their fantasy football MVP for twenty twenty four. So we're going to jump right in, and we're going to start with Rich Rebar. He was on last year's episode as well. He is the fake football meteorologist over at Sharp Football Analysis, uh, and we love what Warren Sharp and that team do. So let's hear from Rich Rebar. My guy this year is Fantasy Voldemort. He who must not be named, but we are going to name him. It is Kyle Pitts. Let's take a step back a moment and because I know he's been a disappointing asset, but he won't even turn 24 until this October. Travis Kelsey didn't have his first thousand yard season until age 27 or catch his first pass in the NFL until a month before turning 25. Pitts is only three months older than Sam Laporta. We have a lot of meat left on the bone. This transition to Kirk Cousins and Zach Robinson cannot be understated. Over the past three seasons, under Arthur Smith, the Falcons were 30th in the NFL in drop back rate. Since entering the league, Pitts... 16.2% of his targets have been inaccurate via the quarterback. The only tight end with a higher rate is Darren Waller. Kirk Cousins had the second lowest inaccuracy rate in 2023. He has the sixth lowest rate over the past five years, the fourth lowest inaccuracy rate to tight ends. He also has the sixth lowest inaccurate rate on throws 10 or more yards further downfield if you consider Pitts to still be a vertical pass catcher. We're going to see him just get more access to easy buttons in this Zach Robinson offense. 22.4% of his routes last season were go routes, the highest of any tight end to run 300 or more routes last season. And 15.8% of his targets have been 20 or more yards downfield. Only Darren Waller has been a high, had a higher rate since Pitts entered the NFL. Factoring in Zach Robinson, Kirk Cousins, a depressed ADP that's a pricing and ultimate upside for Drake London. This is the year to finally get on board with Kyle Pitts. Look, I, I, heard, <laughs> I heard one word, depressed. I heard that. <laughs> I was in there, and that's a good word to describe the Kyle Pitts managers of the last three years. Um, but I mean, look, I've been golden ticketed. Yeah, Obviously I'm a big believer, <laughs> right? If you I, listen to the live show, we know that you are all in on Kyle Pitts. There, there's a price for Kyle Pitts. I actually took him in my last two drafts because he just kept slipping. Um, uh, you know, there's a, there's a spot for him because he represents an upside, albeit a downside as well. Because eventually we're going to paint every possible picture for Kyle Pitts to be successful. And if he doesn't do it in any of those, we'll give up. But it, um, it is it is worth noting that, you know, we, we we talk about guys at their ADP a lot on the show. Who's a good value? Who's who? You know, we're, we're talking about picks we like and picks we don't. But I think it gets overblown sometimes with the ones we don't like. We have not been all in on Kyle Pitts where he's being drafted. Devontae Adams, I've had as a guy that I, I see as a bad pick early um, on the on the live show. You talked about Anthony Richardson, Andy, about he, he he's not going to be the quarterback five. Um, he, and so if you're drafting in the Megala Bowl, okay, in your, or, or just your home league, and they all listen to this show, and they're used to the takes we have, when we have been doing our live drafts this week, our listener league. I've seen it. Dude, Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams, Kyle Pitts, Anthony Richardson, guys we have talked about being a just a bad value, a bad pick. 
They've dropped so far. They're oh. freaking awesome picks. Yeah, we got them right where we want them, boys. <laughs> I, mean, I got Devontae Adams in the fifth round I mean, of like, our listener league. Like that's that's incredible value. These aren't players that are – so I'm, I'm just saying, like, don't overreact to what we're saying. React appropriately. We, I, you know, I, I still think Devontae Adams is a bad pick at the one-two turn, but – you know, in the fifth round. Well, the go, Pitts go drum, the Pitts drumbeat is building in the fantasy community uh, because Rich is not alone. When no, we got our submissions not. from uh, experts and friends of the show, we got the lead fantasy analyst at Pro Football Focus, Nathan Yonke, who is sharing his MVP. And um, who could it be? I don't know. Hey, after listening to your top ten tight end episode, I knew my MVP had to be Kyle Pitts. He's still a talented tight end, top five by PFF grade over the last three years, and is still only 23 years old, will be 24 by this season, but he's still younger than some of the tight ends in the rookie class. But he had a lot working against him last year. He was not running enough routes, he was not seeing enough short targets, and he did not have good enough quarterback play. Uh, He averaged 25 routes per game over the past two seasons, which a lot of that had to do with them being a very run-heavy offense, but he was also taking off the field way too much. Uh, typically was seeing around 64% of offensive snaps last year, only two games above 75%. Expect that to increase significantly to around 30 routes per game, so a 20% increase. Also, his average depth of target of 12.7 is very high for a tight end. Expect that to be going down a bit. If you only counted tight ends deep passing work and intermediate passing work, he would already be a top three or four fantasy tight end. He just needs to see more of those short targets and Tyler Higby, the Rams tight end the past couple of years, uh, average depth of target 4.3 recently. So I expect him to see a lot more shorter targets. And then the quarterback play. He's had the second worst quarterback play of all teams just behind the Jets. Expect with Kirk Cousins that to be a lot better. We expect Garrett Wilson to be playing a lot better with a better quarterback. Expecting the same out of Pitts. So uh, thank you for having me and have a good one. All right. Thank you, Nathan. And Jason, you always give uh, Mr. Yankee his flowers, right? Uh, the way he's handled... All the preseason, uh, yes. dude. Um, his preseason work yes. is second to it's none. Must follow. Yeah, it, it's a great, great follow. I try to tweet out his stuff and 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 share it. I mean, he's he's personally doing snap counts on on everyone. It's 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 awesome. Um, he so he, Pitts part two. Yeah, I mean, you've got two guys. He must be the MVP. <laughs> well, I mean, the, these these are two people who know what they're talking about. They're well respected, well respected by us. We're having people on the show. We you know that we think have. Good, strong opinions that are outside of Except our own for one. bubble. One of them we don't respect. We're not saying which one. Yeah, you yeah. can figure it out. It's Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait. I can't wait for after Kyle's take. Yes. That's, no, that's going to we'll be a special there. moment on yeah. our show yeah, today. Yeah, a special final moment. Uh, but but it's, worth, <laughs> special final moment. it's worth saying, like, you know, we have not been in on Kyle Pitts, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. Um, and Kyle Pitts is obviously very, very, he is hopefully still a very, very powerful athlete. Uh, right. he, he didn't look like it last year, but at 24 years old, you can't write the guy off. No question. Uh, there are, uh, if there's a player that has probably had delivered more burns to fantasy managers, it's hard to find one other than Kyle Pitts because the expectations were so high. The draft capital, what you saw as a rookie, Touchdowns have never been there, but those are all a ton of good points by Rich and Nathan. Uh, we're going to turn now to um, where are we going? We're going uh, Ben Gretsch. Ben Gretsch, yep. Yeah. Uh, from the Stealing Signals newsletter. My fantasy MVP is year three wide receiver Garrett Wilson. As long as Aaron Rodgers stays healthy and doesn't go off on an ayahuasca journey in mid October, <laughs> I expect Wilson to take his place among the elites at the position in 2024. It's not really there in his past data, in part because Zach Wilson couldn't read out defenses and get the ball downfield last year which led to Brees Hall leading the NFL's running backs and targets in 2023, even in a year where he was returning from an ACL injury. But when you watch what Wilson does well, it's apparent it will translate with Rodgers. I expect a massive target share in an offense that doesn't have strong secondary weapons. And with the way Rodgers operates in the red zone, with a high pass rate and the types of timing routes that Wilson can win on, I think double-digit TDs are just the beginning with a 15-plus season well in the range of outcomes. Mm. If Wilson does what I'm hoping for, he'll be the answer, given those tough draft slots at the end of the first round, a score that can match the top five picks. All right, Ben. Um, That's spicy. Those are some some big words. The 15 touchdowns stands out because you can't help but think of Devontae Adams alongside Aaron Rodgers in the peak, and, and that was the name of the game with 
with Adams and with Rodgers. Even if the yardage wasn't there, Rodgers would throw three or four a game, and it was, uh, you know, and you knew one or two was going to Adams. If Wilson is that guy for this team, he is. He is that guy for this team. He is, is Rodgers that Rodgers for this? No, team? no, he's not. That's that's the issue. If if Garrett Wilson was playing with 2018 Aaron Rodgers, then Garrett Wilson should be picked. You know, right after Ceedee Lamb. Well, I mean, what is uh, Wilson has like seven. Yeah, seven total receiving touchdowns. In his first two years, which is um, not going to get it done for the draft capital you have to spend on. I, so I you have, do need to see you need to see the step up. But if you get it, and Wilson ventures into the uh, wide receiver three to five category being drafted where he is, that is fantasy MVP worthy. There is a huge tear break to me, huge, just gigantic. Once you get after the A.J. Brown, Justin Jefferson – Chase, Amon Ross, St. Brown, like, like those guys are awesome. I want them so bad in the first round. But you get to this break after those specific players. And I, I think Puka has gone because of the knee injury. He's 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 gone a step below that tier. So now when you're talking about, I want a wide receiver at the back of the first, the top of the second, and you're talking about Garrett Wilson, you're talking about Puka and Marvin Harrison, Devontae Adams, Chris Olave, I feel like Garrett Wilson has risen to the top of that list for me simply because of hopeful upside. I mean, I, I I guess I've still got Puka ahead of Garrett Wilson, but the rest of those guys, you know, we know for sure Derek Carr is not going to be 2018 Aaron Rodgers. We know that for sure. Right. Maybe Aaron Rodgers can get back to being, you know, old school Aaron Rodgers. Also, the, the you know, Adam's seasons were number one caliber seasons. So if Rodgers is 80%, but, you know, think about what has Garrett Wilson had? He's right. had the equivalent of 4% Aaron Rodgers he's in had, his first two years. He's had That's two, being generous. I, yeah. I believe he had 1999 Aaron Rodgers throwing him the ball. <laughs> Young. It was a little baby. Little baby. Little baby who could not throw the ball well. Man, the high school Aaron Rodgers might be better than <laughs> Was 1999 high school for him? I was trying to go to I like. I assume so. Oh gosh, I needed to go way. I I forget how old he is. He's as old as you. Forget he, how old you are. 1982. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is older than me. Wow. So He's that would have been so, that would have been like sophomore junior Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> that would have been amazing for Garrett Wilson. <laughs> that would have been incredible. To to be fair, to be fair, I think I actually comped it perfectly. Like, like sure, high school sure. Aaron Rodgers is yeah. probably exactly what Zach Here, Wilson is. Here's what oh, I'll say, man. because to give the counterbalance of the case, and we've seen it, you know, Wilson's had a rough ride. There are not good vibes in New York right now. And they are the New York Jets. So you combine those things, you know, there's, there's talk of the locker room not really being what it should be, Rodgers being not a team team player in in terms of, you know, we don't know. Sure, but when when it what I'm saying is that if it goes bad in New York, it might go real bad. We're talking the end of Rodgers, the end of Sala, and a full reset again. Like if if it doesn't work for them this year, think about where the Jets are at. They they, they don't have a quarterback, right? You're not going to have a head coach. Like you're talking full reset for Garrett Wilson. You look at what's on the line for dynasty managers of Garrett Wilson right now. It's really heavy. oh, you're playing a dangerous game. You're walking on that edge of the mountain. All right, we are going to uh, – the next two we're bringing in-house. And we're going uh, to turn the page to Kyle Borgannoni. He's our editor-in-chief. He's the host of the DFS and uh, the Betting and Dynasty pods. Smart guy. And uh, Let's hear a smart here we take. go. Yo, 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 yo. This is Kyle Borgannoni. All things stats-related with the fantasy footballers. And my pick for fantasy MVP this year – is the Philadelphia Eagles offense. We can often take a binary approach with teammates in fantasy, stating it's going to be this guy or it's going to be that guy. You might think that Jalen Hurts around the goal line is going to take away opportunities from Saquon Barkley or that A.J. Brown, he's the alpha wide receiver in this offense or maybe Devonta Smith is the one getting those slot snaps in Kellen Moore's new look pre-snap motion offense. But what if it's everybody? What if this is a rising tide lifts all boats situation? What if Hertz ends up the season as a quarterback one? Barkley finishes as a top five back and Brown and Smith both end up as wide receiver ones 
something they did in 2022. This offense is going to roll, and I think it's possible that all their top options exceed their draft costs and make fantasy managers happy. Thoughts, Mike? Now, Kyle, you are, you're on the microphone. You can hear us and you can respond to us. So what the acronym MVP, I just want to know, in your opinion, what does that stand for? No, 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 no. no. Answer, Answer the, the question. question. Oh, okay. And now, so who who would you say your most <laughs> valuable player would be? Yeah, oh, there it is. There there it is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. That's yeah. the yeah. not coward Woo. answer. I know this whole offseason. Like Devontae <laughs> Smith was so close to being one of my my guys, and 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 talking behind the scenes, Kyle was all about that. Kyle's yes. been in on Devontae Smith he has. this whole offseason. But the same reason I didn't take him is the same reason that <laughs> Coward Kyle comes out here and is like the Eagles because it's like, ah, it might be A.J. Brown's so good. You know, it's like uh, I, I agree I agree with your take, but MVP, yeah, here's, most valuable people. Kyle is wanting it to be Devontae Smith, but if, the, if A.J. Brown is the wide receiver one, he's just going <laughs> to slide in there and be like, Remember, remember <laughs> my, what I said? Most valuable. Yeah, I have. Uh, Get out of here, Kyle. You know what? Thank you for entertaining <laughs> us. I look when I when we got your MVP audio yesterday for the show, I knew when I pushed that button it would be Devonte Smith, and so to hear the hedge, I get it. Uh, the Eagles are one of the most interesting storylines in football to me. Yeah, you you've been talking about the Eagles a lot behind the scenes, off the microphone. Uh, I don't know. If yeah, how I don't know how public I've been with my doubts, but I mean, I I do not. I have money on them not making the playoffs, and I put money on two or three things before every season, like almost nothing. Yeah, I don't bet, but yeah. I bet on that because I I'm very concerned, and I think the loss of Jason Kelsey is massive, and it's going to put so much more on the shoulders of Jalen Hurts, and if they had. If they had a great season and then they lost one playoff game that got ugly, I wouldn't be feeling that way. But the fact that the head coach and the quarterback didn't talk for a really long time, the fact that they collapsed the whole yeah, they half lost of the six season. of seven games, I think, and that's like that's hard to do. Yeah, and Kelsey chooses to walk away. Yeah, which which, which is so more so old. No, no, no. I know, but, but it's, I don't it, know if you've heard. He's doing okay. Yeah, he's doing okay. But but I think to Andy's point. If the vibes of that team, if they were having fun, like Travis Kelsey could have walked away. He's old enough to walk away, but they're winning championships and the, the locker room is fun. I think Jason Kelsey was like, this was a tiring, exhausting season. I don't want like the vibes. He's going to be 37. Man. No, but I mean, look, he, I, I, this is not, we don't have to speculate on what Jason Kelsey said because he came out on an interview and literally said it was bad. He said like, it's not just one thing. It wasn't one player, one situation. It was coaching. They Here's what we know about the Eagles. They don't get Shane Steichen back, and they don't get Jonathan Gannon back. They tried two new coordinators last year. It didn't work. They're trying it again this year. There's going to be a new coordinator. We we It could work. It could be great. But a lot's going to be put on Jalen Hurts' shoulder, and we saw at least a long enough stretch of bad football to know that Bad football is in the range of outcomes even when you have the talent. Like, it's easy for us in fantasy to be like, you've got maybe, legitimately maybe the best trifecta of wide receivers in the game with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Jahan Dotson. That that might be the best three. But even with the best players on the field, they struggled. So to say that they're going to struggle, look, it, they have the upside of being the best team in football. I just have my doubts that it's going to be as smooth as people – you know, he does have to learn a new system. We don't. We we That's do. That's all have he to. does every year of his entire <laughs> life is learn a new system. Genuinely, the, there's yeah. only been one time since high school, one year, one season, where he had the same coordinator for the second time, and he was like the MVP of of the NFL that Who year. Who was the the famous quarterback Campbell? Um, what's his first name? Jason Campbell. Jason Campbell. You remember this? I remember Jason Campbell. Jason Campbell, I believe, had a new offensive coordinator for like 10 consecutive years. It, it just reminded me of uh, that, yeah, where here, he never got a fair shake. Here's, uh, here's since 2016, Jalen Hurts, uh, offensive coordinator. Lane Kiffin, Brian Dayball, Mike Loxley, 
Steve Sarkeesian. Loxley. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. No, I love it. Doug Peterson. <laughs> Had to be done. Shane Steichen. Shane Steichen. There's the the one. Brian Johnson and Kellen Moore. So he's he's used to this. I will say this, and and then we'll move on. Um, the news that Kelsey was doing all the protections, that he was the one in charge of calling out the protections, making sure that you know reading the defense in in that sense. Um, that came out recently that it was verified as truth and Hertz was talking about how that stopped his learning and you could spin this one of two ways. You can look at this as a really bad thing. Like this is something Hertz hasn't done before uh, that he's going to have to add to his plate and it could really not work or you could spin this the other way and say, I think Hertz should be the one calling the protections and I think he's capable of that and he, he should be better now that he's in charge of more. What and, you, I, and I think yeah, we are separate yeah. because I've always, since college, I've always been a Jalen Hurts believer. He was a my guy a couple years ago when he had that breakout season. I think he is that dude. I think he is the hardest working, smart, capable, talented in every facet of his life. And so I'm like putting my belief. I'm with Kyle here in that I'm in on the Eagles. Yeah. Yep. So it'll be it'll be a fascinating it's, thing to watch this season. You sharing those offensive coordinators, I couldn't help but notice that the the elite Super Bowl year was the first time he got to be in the offense a second time. Yes. So it makes me wonder a little bit about acclimation this year. Does that happen? How fast does it happen? Didn't that like happen to Matt Ryan too? Kyle, that was happening to Ryan, right? It was just like over and over. Until he got to repeat. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it happened with Bruce Arians and the Carson Palmer yeah, offense yes. where year two, everything came together. So we'll be very interesting to watch. Time to turn it uh, over to Matthew Betts. What's up, Foot Clan? This is Matthew Betts, host of the DFS and Dynasty podcast. And my fantasy MVP for the 2024 season is none other than Rashi Rice. I'll admit, I do feel like I'm cheating a little bit with this answer because if it weren't for the off the field issues, Rice would be going a lot higher, probably in the third round of drafts. But right now, over on ESPN and Sleeper, he's going in the seventh round. That is an absolute steal for a player who developed into Pat Mahomes' top option down the stretch. And look, is there some risk with this pick? Yeah, of course there is, right? He could get suspended late in the year. The legal issues could come back. But that's already baked into the ADP, and we just got news this week that they will not place him on the commissioner exempt list, and they're going to let the legal situation play itself out. That means this thing could easily get pushed to the 2025 season. As I mentioned, Rice was awesome last year as a rookie, averaging 2.2 one yards throughout run and a 27% target share down the stretch after he became a full-time player. And, you know, the target competition, yes, it's more difficult with Xavier Worthy and Hollywood Brown. Of course, Travis Kelsey's there. But Rice proved he's a talented player. And if they do continue to limit Kelsey's snaps this year, as they've said they will do with their eyes on the postseason, Rasheed Rice should be the direct beneficiary of that, getting those shorter area targets as Mahomes' go-to guy. And look, the Chiefs last year, their offense was not what we're used to, but their moves tell us they want Pat Mahomes to throw, throw, throw. You get Xavier Worthy. You sign Hollywood Brown. You got Rasheed Rice still there. Like All the moves say we're going to throw more than we did a year ago and really get that explosive element of our pass game back. Mahomes is as good a bet as anyone to lead the league in passing touchdowns and yards. I want a piece of that passing offense. Rasheed Rice is a great way to get it this year. It's... Uh... It's a good pick. I feel like every draft right now, it's who's going to pull the trigger first on yeah, Rashi that, Rice. That's everything because my chips are all in. Of like, I have Rice now projected. I'm just I'm I'm projecting the full season. Uh, I, he's I, your wide receiver, seventeen. Yeah, he's in my top twenty. Is it in to the point of I'm drafting him that if a suspension happens at the end of the year, I don't care because uh, I'm my goal is to get into the playoffs. If I have to deal with that later, I will deal with that later. And it's it's to the point of he's great because his ADP is still low. He's not going to go there. If In casual leagues, he might go there. If you're in a competitive league, he will go higher. So, again, he said, it's where are you willing to take him? I'm willing to go fifth. I'm even willing to go into the fourth because in the fourth, that's where, like, ADP-wise, you're talking about, that's the late teens of the wide receivers, and that's where I have ADP, him he's at the back of the seventh on sleeper, the wide receiver 38. So I think you should be able to nab him in the fifth round if if you like him there. And I I would do that every time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm literally making some rankings tweaks to my positioning of Rashi Rice because while there's the risk, Mike outlaid it very well. It, it, it's too valuable a commodity for 
the potential that he's there all year, which I think is – I mean, yeah, I don't know how we would right, handicap him, but I'm, I would say probably 75-25 is where yeah, I'm at in yeah. terms of being there I'd all be year. I'd be in the 80%. So, yeah, it's a, I think it's a really important name to bring up. And, you know, I just want to applaud – Matthew Betts for just not going with he said a lot of things about Kansas City's offense he did but he didn't choose the offense as the most valuable player you know what right. I mean well that's yeah. not a player right right MVT <laughs> MVT <laughs> all right we're gonna turn it over to great friend of the show JJ Zacharyson hey losers oh, JJ. hope hey. everyone's doing nice well. picture my MVP pick this season look I went back and forth on a handful of guys I could call out Kyler Murray here but everyone's probably going to call out Kyler Murray. So I'll switch things up and I'll go with Brian Thomas. Let's get a little weird. Thomas scored well in my zap model, my prospect model. He had a score of 94.5. Since 2014, we've had 23 rookie wide receivers get drafted in the wide receiver 40 to wide receiver 60 range with a zap score above 90. Over 39% of those rookie wideouts exceeded average draft position expectation by three or more PPR points per game. That's an absurd rate. A normal sample would be around the 21-22% mark. Thomas could play the Calvin Ridley role in this Jacksonville offense this year. And while Ridley had some struggles last season, he was a fringe wide receiver one and expected fantasy points per game. So we've got a good prospect in a good situation. To me, He's a great pick at his current cost. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, we, I'm, I'm so in. <laughs> I <laughs> love Brian Thomas <laughs> Jr. Now, unfortunately, J.J. did not put the junior in there, so I'm pretty sure he chose his father. Oh, right. What a, which, a dumb pick, not on a Not on a roster. Terrible 40 time. Yeah, and yeah, I think he's past the age cliff, too. It's just a <laughs> stupid pick, J.J. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you didn't endear us to, with the Hey Losers start. But um, that's the only reason the picture stayed. Yeah, that's true. If you're on YouTube, I was I was ready to turn the you know, page on that, but then he called us losers, and mm. that hurt my feelings. Yeah. Honestly, if, yeah, YouTube.com/slash uh, Fantasy Footballers, go over there and make sure that um, you see his beautiful picture. It is a picture of JJ. That's YouTube.com/slash The Fantasy Footballers. JJ, we love you, JJ. Um, Brian Thomas has a great opportunity. We brought up uh, names yesterday: Trevor Lawrence. The fact the offense can get going at various times and the fact that Brian Thomas is the you know he he's the explosive weapon in that offense so it, it makes a ton of sense all right we had the chance to hop on to up and Adams the K Adams show over on YouTube the other day Jason got I got golden ticketed <laughs> you got golden ticketed into a wonderful take on Sam Darnum I who just, you love I love him man <laughs> so uh we asked Kay to come and share her Fantasy MVP pick. Hey, Foot Clan, it's Kay Adams from the Up and Adams Show. My fantasy MVP, thanks for asking, is Justin Jefferson. It's about value. It's about production, track record. It's about belief in a high-volume offense. He's going eighth overall in average drafts. Did I read that correctly? That's crazy. He's fifth at receiver. Uh, there's a great chance. I'm feeling very confident that he outproduces everybody at the position. The man played in eight full games. Read it in week. Eight games, four different quarterbacks, still put up over 1,000 yards. So, sure, is it fair to have questions about Sam Darnold? Fine. I know that, you know, Jason doesn't. He, like, golden ticketed his way into falling in love with him. But I love him, too, in this offense. I believe in Kevin. Uh, you know, I don't think the, the, this is one of those receivers. It doesn't matter who's throwing him the ball. As proven last year, he's going to put up his numbers no matter who's back there. And he actually averaged the most yards per game of his entire career last season. We love Justin Jefferson. By the way, he'll be on Up and Adam Show. Check it out on FanDuel TV and on our YouTube. Um, thanks, guys. Love ya. Yeah, this is the – it's it's crazy. Jefferson. With, with Justin Jefferson of the – do we get to the end of the year and we all go, oh, why are we so stupid? Nope. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Hey, well, look, the Jason's fact that holding on. the fact that Jefferson can be in this show and be in this discussion and not have it be, you know, a like a goofy pick. You know what I mean? Like you're just taking the top guy off the board. Like Jefferson needed to be brought up. It's the great debate. I mean, there are what's happening right now is he's not going very high relative to previous seasons, and when you take him. You feel like, uh, like yes. what? A, I yes. Know. 
Yeah, I t- okay, I-, I settled for the best receiver <laughs> in the National Football League. I, I took him on our mock draft yesterday, and I didn't feel great about it. I would have rather have had A.J. Brown, who has a good quarterback, um, you know, one of, in, any, any one of the other top guys. But I think we've got him appropriately placed in the sense, like, I've got him down for 1,600 yards. I'm not, I'm not anti-Justin Jefferson. I just think he's going to end up with six touchdowns. And if that's the case, a back – or really not even not even at the end of the first round like he's sometimes going as the the fourth wide receiver off the board in the middle of the first round it's going to be tough to be happy with that if you if you end the season with six touchdowns and so that's the real question is just can Darnold throw enough touchdowns yeah and um he will be positioned to and given the opportunity in the offense to see what he's got and Look, look you made it. both cases on her show, Jason, yes. and so there is a case. Um, Do you believe in the Vikings' offensive play calling? Yes. I do, too. And I believe in myself. <laughs> and if I were the play caller, and I'm down at the 10, if I'm down at the 5, if I'm down at the 15. If you're on the football field. I am, yes. <laughs> regardless I, of the hash marks. Do we have the ball? No, my point is. When we get to a condensed defense, I'm going to focus on running the ball and not put it in Sam Darnold's hands. Oh. <laughs> That's smart. I thought, I thought we were saying the same thing of if we're on the football field. Yeah, but you're not going to be able to do that because Aaron Jones is over the hill. Oh. I don't think so. And you're down four scores. Oh. That's true. So <laughs> we'll find out. Um, we're going to take a break and come back with each of our MVP picks to finish up the show. All right, uh, last year's fantasy MVP picks, Jason mentioned it. He had Bijan on this episode. I went with Debo, who uh, he had a good season, ended mm-hmm. up in the top 12. Mike had Zay Flowers, which uh, yeah, baby, it was really good that first part of the year for Zay Flowers. He was a difference maker for your team. And championship week. <laughs> and championship week. So it, it did help. I, don't think- I needed to refresh my memory, though, on who we picked. I couldn't remember. I don't think there's a chance that either myself or Mike can go first. Andy has been looking forward to this show because he has been I, excited to yeah. talk about this player. I just felt like he was – he was a player that I was – it was on the board as a my guy for a long time. And, unfortunately, the my guy episode kind of lined up with an injury to his quarterback. And it gave me the heebie-jeebies. Okay? It got me a little bit nervous that I was going to pick a player with a dependency on a currently injured player. Like you're going to – Like Waddle. Like a, like a yeah. player who has an <laughs> undisclosed injury for two weeks? Mike's super happy about that. Um, We're at three weeks now. Well, it's finally disclosed, Jesus. Oh, okay. All right. How, now he's got a disclosed injury. How happy will you be when he runs out onto the field on play one with a red jersey on them? <laughs> Can you do that? Oh, that'd he's going to awesome. try. Of course. He's Jalen Waddle, and he needs that. Um, my fantasy MVP for 2024 is none other than Cooper Cup, wide receiver for the Los Angeles Rams. Cooper Cup of coffee. Cooper Cup I have taken everywhere. In all my drafts, even in the listener league, a round ahead of Devontae Adams because I was afraid of not getting him. In our league of record, I just did a mock draft of our league of record, Keeper League. I had him mocked going to you in the first at round nine. At, at pick nine, and I'm telling you right now, look at me in the eyes. He's not getting to you. <laughs> Sorry. What are you? Yeah, what is going I'm just on? T- you I'm, control one team, Jason. I control a pick right before you, and Cooper Cup is you not. You have pick five. And he's not getting to you. So that, that, I mean, for the record then, that's Jason. He's going to take him over Pacheco. I know that. That's good to know. Um, you, you get one pick, Jay. You get no. one in that draft. I'm talking to our entire league right now. <laughs> I know <laughs> you are. Don't what, let him, don't let him get there. What are you doing? I'm just saying, I think Cooper Cup is going to be really good this year. I shared on our live show in Los Angeles that I believe the Rams will win the West. I think uh, the 49ers, uh, albeit they you know, they made the move, they got Brandon Ayuk, I think it's hard. It's very difficult to just maintain that kind of dominance year after year after year. And Sean McVay is a crafty fella, and I love what this team has on offense. Um, I believe that Puka and Cup can both finish as top 10 wide receivers. 
And the value you get on Cooper Cup right now, it's outstanding. There were areas last year where Cooper Cup already edged out Puka Nakua despite the injuries in the limited season. Um, that was in the slot. He had more receiving yards, touchdowns, yards after catch, higher target share than Puka in the slot. And also inside the red zone, he had more targets, more receptions, more touchdowns, higher percentage of first reads. We've had the report this offseason. This offense runs through Cooper Cup, and it still does. Um, Puka did amazing things last year, but none of them were in replacement of what Cooper Cup does from a, from a, a game planning standpoint. They were in replacement while he was hurt, but this this is Sean McVay. He's not a fool. He's not going to go and um, discount the former number one overall player who broke a ton of records just because he missed some time. To me, it's about the pick and the value, obviously, with Cooper Cup. You can sneak him into the fourth round. That's the storyline. He is ranked above his ADP by all three of us. And uh, I, I think we get back to you know, a very high value fantasy option at fantasy MVP at a discount price. That's what makes an MVP to me. A lot of it has to do with the draft cost. So Cooper Cup's my fantasy MVP for 2024. All right, Jay, you're up. I'm up. Uh, look, this is a guy I, I talked about it at the, the opening of the show. My MVP this season is not someone I think is going to break fantasy. I think he's just going to help your roster construction better than just about any other player in the draft. I think there are three guys in the draft this year that at value roster construction-wise are unbelievable. Two of them are my guys. It's Mike's Kyler Murray. It's Andy's Jaden Daniels. And now my MVP, Dalton Kincaid. Dalton Kincaid is going to allow you to have an elite tight end this season and depth at running back and wide receiver. Like, we all want a great quarterback. We all want a great tight end. But when you have to take him in the second or the third round, I look at Travis Kelsey. I just pulled up his ADP right now. Um, and as of this moment, right before him is Devon A. Chan, one of my, my guys. Right after him is Isaiah Pacheco. I want those players. I want those running backs. And if you're telling me that the gap between Travis Kelsey and Dalton Kincaid is the same as the gap between – you know, these top flight running backs and a in a fifth round, let me look at a running back that's going there, DeAndre Swift. No, it's not the same. Kincaid has a chance to be the number one tight end this season. He's connected to Josh Allen and his usual 4,400 passing yards. Who's it going to? I have him down as the target leader for this team. Uh, Dalton Kincaid is really, really talented. Because of Sam Laporta, Sam Laporta is the reason that Dalton Kincaid is undervalued because you didn't realize what a great rookie season Dalton Kincaid had for fantasy. Not great, which is why I'm always like rookie tight ends don't work, but for rookie seasons, it was really good. He had the fourth most receptions ever for a rookie. And then Gabe Davis leaves the, the wide receiver one for this team. And then Stefan Diggs leaves the wide receiver two for this team. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's stupid. That's, I was trying it on for size. <laughs> it doesn't make no, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Um, but, but he had, he had seven top finishes as a rookie. Dalton Kincaid did. That's as many as Jake Ferguson or Trey McBride had last year. I project him to be the number one target earner in the Buffalo offense. I have him down for 133 targets, 93 receptions over a thousand yards and only six touchdowns. If he ends up with eight or nine touchdowns as a tight end for Josh Allen, he can be the, you know, the number one tight end regardless of if he's the number one or if he finishes as the number five tight end. From a fantasy perspective, week after week after week, you're locked, you're loaded, you're good. You're going to get enough targets, enough yards to be happy with him at the fifth. And then you look at the rest of your roster and it's good because you didn't go with Sam Laporta because you didn't go with Travis Kelsey. You let the value drop to you. Every week you're good at tight end and the rest of your roster is loaded. So to me, that's how I'm defining my fantasy MVP this year. And obviously I'm taking him at nine. <laughs> yeah. Along with Cooper Cup. Yeah, what a great pick. Uh, will you get both? I can't. Yeah. Incredible. I'm the defending champ. Now I see how you were the champ. <laughs> All right. Well, one more fantasy MVP pick uh, to go. Uh, Mike is up. And why is it Rico Dowdle? <laughs> it is it is not Rico Dowdle oh! for all out there guessing. He was already on the bold projections or predictions. Right? I was I was really upset that we didn't have drops 
announcing our pick because I really wanted to tank Bigsby Andy here. <laughs> oh, really, my God. I really want. Well, I was like, <laughs> how can we tank Bigsby again? But all right, go all with right, Tank Bigsby. My fantasy MVP is Ken Bone Walker, Seattle Seahawks running back. He is going in the back of the fourth. That's just his name now. It is. It certainly it is. is. It is. It's. It's. It feels good, guys. You'll get a chance to try it on when now we're talking listen, about him the studs and duds. Can I just jump in momentarily sure, because sure. it's worth it? Mike has been calling him Ken Bone Walker for way too long. <laughs> way like since and, and no 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 I got, I got to share this because we're about to get back into the studio watching these games every Sunday. <laughs> And let me tell you, when when the Seattle Seahawks hey, get when they get the red inside zone the gets a new name when they get inside the twenty, <laughs> Mike will scream, "He's in the bone zone!" Okay, so if you want to play along, oh man, it's you, true. you just know that Mike is somewhere. <laughs> yeah, if if especially hey. if they're within the ten, it's the bone zone. For, okay, for all the political junkies out there, this is a super sick, really current reference. <laughs> yes, Ken Bone. <laughs> Ken Bone Walker, go on. Your uh, MVP. So here's the deal. The Bone Zone. From weeks one through ten, you for, we forget. Weeks one through ten, he was the running back six, guys. And he had already been through his bye week in that time. And he's sitting at running back six. He gets hurt in week 11. Unfortunate. But so in that time, he was seeing 77% of the running back attempts. If he had finished there, that would be tied for the fifth highest RB share uh, at the end of the season. He gets back from his injury. 82% of the running back attempts went to Kenneth Walker. That would have been the third highest mark on the season. Yes, here is the here is the the part what, that needs to increase for him. Again, I'm not even – all the explosive plays, all that's built in. Only an 8% target share. We need a little bit more than that to get him to be a truly elite difference-making running back. The Pete Carroll era, they're just, as a whole, that wasn't part of their system. Running back targets were just not something that they went with. And the new offensive coordinator, Grubb, he's already talking about, we need to up this. And the, it could be coach speak, but he's talking about Kenneth, Kenneth Walker. He's like, he's a good pass catcher. We need to get him involved in that area of the game more and more. The Seattle Seahawks were dead last in offensive plays last year. You know, partly because the defense couldn't get the other offense off the field, but it's also just this is part of the way that they were playing football. I expect the the tempo to go up under Grubb. I expect running back targets to go up. And my point is, if Walker can maintain that high seventy percentile of running back attempts, and if you get just a ten percent target share, like he will be a true difference making running back, and he's going in the back of the fourth. So he he is right now, Ken Walker, young, explosive running back. He is sandwiched in between Joe Mixon, who's 28. Then we got Kamara, who's 29. Got James Conner, who's about to turn 30. Or Yeah, uh, Aaron Jones is about to turn 30, I'm sorry. And James Conner, who's 29. And then there's Ken Walker, right there in the mix of those guys. Running backs is always about youth. I'm not, I, this is, I'm not saying I'm out on those other guys, but just – they're old. If they fall apart this year, it will shock nobody. Right. So Ken Walker is just – he's sitting here. He keeps falling to me. I like I'm getting him in the late fourth, getting him in, in the early fifth as a running back two or even to me as a running back one if I load up on three wide receivers and a tight end in those first four rounds. He just he, – to me is such a good, juicy pick. Well, I, you look at the explosive plays – uh, just yeah. looking back at his game log last year, and you're like, okay, you know, you've got a game where his longest run was 36 yards, his longest run was 31 yards, his longest run was 45 yards. I mean, he's constantly he's a home hitting run hitting big back. plays. Yeah, I, look, it makes sense, and I've I've started to feel like when we get into these drafts, he just sits there. He just sits he, there. He does as a value. He, he is a name that people like. It, people don't want to draft him. Yeah, it's a, he feels like that a reluctant pick for a lot of people. All right, so then if you break it down, what do we got? We got Ken Walker, Dalton Kincaid, Cooper Cup. That's our three. K. Adams went with Justin Jefferson. J.J. went with Brian Thomas Jr. I assume. Uh, Matthew Betts with Rashi Rice. Kyle the Borgogan went with the, uh, the I think you, the NFC. Um, ben Gretsch, Garrett Wilson, 
And then we had two Kyle Pitts MVP picks from Rich Rebar and Nathan Yonke. I had thought a lot, guys, about just saying round two. That's my right. that's my your, MVP. Your MVP round is the two. Second round. If anyone in that round hits, that's dumb. I, I was, told you. I told you to make a pick in the second. I'm I'm gonna take round one. Oh crap. Yeah, oh my guys are gonna, gonna be, be way so much better, better than yours. <laughs> All right, the last chance right now to get into the Megalobowl. Go to megalobowl.com for all the details. It's your chance to play with over 16,000 Foot Clan members. And all of us. I think everyone in this studio is in different leagues. We're all out there playing in the Megalobowl. There are a ton of draft times. The drafts start tomorrow. They run through September 4th, and kickoff is September 5th. We'd love to have you come and participate. Half the teams make the playoffs, and the prizing. You win a spot in our 2025 Listener League. You also win a ultimate Foot Clan membership for life, which is pretty special. Megalobowl.com. Head over there right now. And ultimatedraftkit.com if you need help before the weekend. Thank you for tuning in. Shout out to the Deucers. Great job back there. You're our MVPs. That's the truth. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.